So I'm getting to the point where I'm going to actually start um, running the actual tubing. This is, of course, a bulkhead. Um, this one is for a water return, not the drain, but the return from the pump. Um, I'm going to take this and plug it into this piece of black tubing here. I think I'm going to go this side instead. And fortunately, this is a good enough fit to where I don't need to um, heat the tube or anything like that first. I'm going to show you something else real quick, the kind of handy little tip. Okay, so what we're looking at, at here is one of my towers. Um, the hole on the left is for the return, uh, the piece that I just connected the hose to. Uh, the one on the right is for the water drain. Um, basically, what I'm doing here is I decided to connect the hose to the bulkhead first before instead of putting the bulkhead in and then connecting the hose reason for that is is now I can just run this straight down through that way and I don't have to worry about putting a lot of force on the bottom of the aquarium as I try to get that hose connected to the bulkhead connector so uh, just a thought okay so I uh, oops um, these are the water returns um, these pipes were longer than they were supposed to be I needed to cut them down I obviously did not cut them to the same length now when I oops I did not make a this one was not you know six inches shorter than this I wasn't off by that much but I was off by about an inch and a half so I'll show you what I did to uh, fix that okay so I cut this piece too short um, I only cut it short by about an inch or so, but I needed to fix it. Uh, fortunately, hardware stores sell these uh, PVC. I believe this is called a repair coupling or something like that. But the idea here is that it extends. Um, so what I did was I cut this down so that uh, when it was at its maximum length, um, it would be about an inch or two longer than it should be. I'll just plug that into here and I'll be able to fit it exactly as I need. Okay, so as you can see, I have the return put back in place. Um, I haven't fit it back into the socket yet, but basically I can adjust this to fit perfectly. And I'm just gonna drop that in here. And ta-da! Rockin' and rollin'. Okay, so I guess you could say stage one is now done. Um, aquarium is set as far as all the plumbing from the uh, returns and the draining. Um, I'll get in here, hopefully the lighting will stay with us here. Um, you can see I've got the return pumps down here. I just put a little plastic tie on there for fasteners. I didn't want the metal ones under water. But uh, under here you can see this is the uh, return right from the pump below. I've that got a metal fastener on there. Uh, same old design for the PVC. Comes out from the drain, heads over there and goes straight down until it's about an inch or two off the uh, floor of the um, sump. <laughs> it's been a long day folks. Um, you can see my ghetto support system here. Um, that would be just this little metal ring and I've got these zip ties on here. And yep, it's uh, definitely ghetto. Um, you can see I've got a couple more examples of that over there. Ghetto, yes. Does it work? You're damn right it does. So uh, I'm just going to go that way until I uh, come up with something better or just decide I'm happy with it. Uh, I wanted to do a video of this actually connecting the pump to the skimmer, but it was a project that I kind of got started and uh, didn't really have a chance to slow down um, once I was going. So um, there's the pump connected to the spa flex hose. I had to drill a hole in the side of the uh, tank stand. I don't think it'll cause any structural insecurity there. Um, I hate spa flex. The only reason I'm using it, uh, I'll explain that in a second. Uh, let's see here. So here's a here's the spa flex coming out. Um, 
this is a compression coupler. Um, this basically allows, I could loosen this up and drop this down a little bit. Uh, it allows me to set the height as I needed. That's why I used this piece here instead of the uh, twist coupling, um, just because I didn't know how precise I was going to need to be. Uh, protein skimmer here. Um, something that I should probably note. So, here I've got these where I'm using these tubes and uh, basic logic would say that you know you use a clear tube here so that um, you can see if a snail crawls in there or something you can just see the water flowing um, in this particular case and with the help of staple gun hi staple gun yes you'll love the stand door um, in this particular case simple logic is really really bad and evil um, Perhaps not quite those, but it's 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 not uh, the way to go. Using a clear tube, especially with light that I'm going to have down here for the refugium, when you got water and light, you've got algae. So that's why I had to use the spa flex tubing. Um, that's preventing any light from getting in there and uh, preventing algae growth. So I don't have to take that tube out and clean it. Same thing with these drains. <laughs> and staple gun is uh, inspecting my handiwork here. What do you think, buddy? You need to crawl in there? Yeah, think so? Okay, thank you, buddy. So, that's why I'm using this black tube. This would have been a lot simpler if I didn't have to use the spa flex. It's not flexible at all. It's really irritating. I don't like it at all. In fact, my original design, I was going to have the spa flex wrap around back here, but it's not flexible enough to do that, so I had to drill a hole through my brand new stand. Anyway, Basically, stage one is done. Um, I need to start adding some water to this and start hoping that this stuff is uh, leak-proof. I did add a power strip there. Um, that's just connected to one over there. I've got a T5 light, a little 24-inch one that I'm going to put in right here. I'll shoot that in just a second. Okay, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I uh, do have my Core Life 24-inch T5 lighting in here. That's going to be used for the refugium which is uh, that little box. Now I am admittedly being a little ghetto here. I just have the uh, T5 sitting on top of this acrylic sump. I, I debated about that for a little while but I touched the light and held my hand to it that had been on for probably all day and it wasn't even the slightest bit uncomfortable on my hand so I don't believe this is going to be a heat issue as far as affecting the acrylic. Uh, the people at the aquarium shop seem to agree with me. Um, I am a big fan of the uh, drip loop. As you can see, I've got all my power supplies mounted as far off the bottom as I can to help keep water out. Any unused outlets I've got there, I'm going to actually fill with those little uh, kitty plastic knobs. This bottom light strip is for the lighting, um, and I'll be taking care of that in the next phase. So. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, next, we're going to start adding some water, some sand, some live rock, populate the refugium, and uh, see what happens. It's been a fun journey so far. Got a long way to go.